Sorting Swifters! We previously learned how to sort in alphabetical order, and this video we'll be learning how to calculate distance from the device location to the spot. Then we'll learn how to sort the list of spots on that distance value. Along the way, we'll learn about the SIA location type and the distance from method. There's no social distancing between you and your Swift skills. Now, before we can figure out the distance from the user's location to a spot, we have to first get the user's location. And since this is to show the distance between the user's location and each of the cells in our table view, we need to do this in spot list view controller. That's the view controller that has the table view in it. Now, we just got the user's location in an earlier video, but we did that in spot detail view controller. Now, we'll reuse most of that code here. We'll make some modifications that cut out a lot of what we don't need. Since we're not working with maps or we're not reverse geocoding, there's going to be a lot that we're going to get rid of. So in spot list view controller, we are going to need to import core location. We didn't have to do that on the previous view controller because core location was part of map kit and Google places. We're not importing either of those here. Now we do need to create two class properties. We're going to need a location manager. That's of type CL location manager. This should be pretty familiar to you. It was part of all of the previous classes where we worked with user location. And we're also going to need a current location as a class wide property. Now this is going to be of type CL location. We haven't talked much about this type, but it's important that we have a CL location because this type has a method that's going to allow us to calculate the distance between this location and the location of any of our individual spots. That method that is called distance. It's got a from parameter that's another CL location. We'll work with it in just a bit. Now down here is our location manager did update location function. This is that main function that we were working with in the earlier video when we got the user location in spot detail view controller. And as you can see here, we did cut out a lot of the functionality in this code since we're not working with maps and we're not reverse geocoding. And we'll also need to update our view will appear to include a call to get location. So let's code this up. So on our Snacktacular project, make sure that you're in spot list view controller .swift, and right under import UI kit, we're going to import core location. Then underneath where we declare our spots variable, we'll declare these two new properties that we need, var location manager colon, and that's of type CL location manager, exclamation point to implicitly unwrap it. And under that var current location colon CL location, exclamation to implicitly unwrap that too. Now let's head over to spot detail view controller .swift, And we just wrote this extension to be able to handle core location. So let's highlight that entire extension. So from mine, it's from line 110 all the way to the end. We'll copy it with a command C, head back to spot list view controller. We'll go to the very end of this file. So pass the last close curly, add a couple of lines for space, and then paste this in. Now, after extension, we've got to change the class name. It's not spot detail view controller, it's spot list view controller. That'll make the errors go away. And then let's scroll down to the location manager function that has did update locations in it. Let's perform some heavy surgery. So everything right after this print statement that prints the current location, leave the print statement in, but highlight everything else that's in this function. You can highlight all that code and backspace to delete it. Now in the first line of this function, we were previously creating a local variable current location. We've now got a class wide property current location. So I'm just going to delete the let from the front of current location. That will make sure that this value that we declared at the top of this file is now going to be initialized. Then after the print statement, we'll just call sort based on segment pressed. I'm getting an error here. I'm not sure why, but I suspect I've either got an extra curly or I'm missing a curly. So I'm going to highlight my entire code with command A then type control I to fix the indent. And I can see ah, I've got an extra curly brace in here. And I know that because the curly brace at the end of location manager did update locations is flush with the left hand side. It's not supposed to be because the function underneath that is still part of the extension. So that function with a did fail with error should be indented the same amount as the function did update locations. It's not. Now again, you may very well not have had this problem because you weren't sloppy with your highlighting and backspacing like I was. So what I'm going to do is highlight this one extra curly brace that I've got here. For me, it's in 138. Hopefully you didn't have the extra curly brace at all. I'm just going to backspace and delete this. Then command A, control I again, and it looks like everything is formatted properly. No extra curlies. So that's just about everything I need to do in order to get the user location. The one thing I haven't done yet is call get location. I'll do that up here in my view will appear just before I call spots.load data. 
So call get location, open and close parens, and this will get the user's location. Now in order to find the distance between a spot and a user location, we have to have a CL location value in our spot class. Now it's too bad because we've already got a CL location coordinate 2D that's got a latitude and a longitude, but objects of that type don't have this distance from method, and that's what we need to be able to calculate the distance from another location. Now it's really easy to create a new CL location. All we need is a latitude and a longitude, so what we'll do is create a computed property in our spot class so that whenever we need a location, we'll just have this little chunk of code execute and it will return the proper location for us so we can use it in this method. So now let's head over to spot.swift and why don't we add this computed property just below our other two computed properties, latitude and longitude, and just before the title. And we do this by saying var location colon see a location. Notice code completion says the latitude, longitude, and course information reported by the system. We're not doing anything with course information, but we need this for the distance from method. So press return to accept it, then open and close curlies, and all we're going to have inside of here is return CL location, open parentheses, highlight this option with the latitude and longitude, and we'll pass in latitude and longitude. This is kind of wild code because we're creating a calculated property named location by using two other calculated properties, latitude and longitude, that are calculated using our coordinate property, which is the stored value property that's part of every object that's of type spot. Next up, we need to modify our custom table view cell named spot table view cell. Now this cell has a custom distance label and we need to calculate the distance between the device's current location and the spot. Now here's how we do it. First, we're gonna need to import court location. Otherwise, the file won't recognize any of the core location values, those types that begin with CL, as well as any of the methods that we'll need, like a dot distance from that we've been talking about. That's part of the core location framework. Now, we're going to also include a property called current location, and we'll update this each time we hit the cell for row at function in our table view code. I'll show you that in just a minute. Then we'll have a property observer. Remember, these are different than computed properties. Property observers can fire whenever they're set. That's the code that you see in here in did set. Now we've used property observers in custom table view cells before, both in to-do list and in weather gif. So we'll have a spot property in this custom table view cell. Now, when this value is changed, we're gonna call this did set block. Now this is actually triggered in our cell for row at code also. So we'll update this cell spot property and then all this code is gonna run. Now this chunk of code in here will set the name label to spot.name. We'll set the rating label, although we don't have any value in this yet, so we're just gonna be showing zeros in here. And here's how we do the distance calculation. So this first guard statement makes sure that we've got a current location. If current location is nil, we don't go past the guard, the bouncer bounces us out, we're just gonna show dashes in our distance label. But hopefully this will never happen. So if the guard lets us through, we use the location computed property that we just created for spot, and we'll call distance from, passing in the current location to the from property. This calculates the distance in meters to the spot's location from the current location. So this returns a value in meters. I wanna see it in miles. Sincere apologies to everybody outside of the United States who wants meters or kilometers. Feel free to make the calculation appropriate for your country. Sorry, I don't make the laws. So that's what this calculation does. Now, we're also rounding this to one decimal place, and we do this by multiplying the result of this calculation by 10. Then we call the rounded function here to round off anything after the decimal point. This will round it up at 0.5 value or greater, or down if it's less than 0.5. So that means we've cut off everything after the decimal point. It's been rounded. We'll divide by 10. It'll make sure our distance value only has one decimal point. Then we add this value that we just calculated to our distance label. Now, once we have this groovy code, here's how we call it. In spot list view controller, in our cell for row at function, remember this configures each cell just before it shows up in our table view. We're gonna pass in the current location into the cell. Now we're also gonna pass in the spots spot array value for the cell into the spot property of the cell. So that's the one at index path dot row. And as soon as we do this, then we update the spot property. That's gonna trigger the did set block in the property observer in this cell that we just wrote. And this code runs, bingo. And the beauty is if in the future we make any changes to either the spot class or the way we wanna display information in our table view cell, we only have to change the custom cell spot table view cell. We don't have to go back here into the view controller once we've isolated the display code in its own separate view. This is what MVC is all about. Hopefully you see why this is a better way to write code than to cram everything into the view controller. 
But as Steve Jobs used to say, there's one more thing we need to sort based on the distance. So we'll do that up in our function sort based on segment pressed. Now the code for case one is gonna be almost identical to case zero where we sorted A to Z. It's just this time our sort parameters are dollar sign zero and dollar sign one dot location dot distance from instead of just dollar sign zero dollar sign one dot name. That'll work. Let's code it and dominate the distance you code monster. So let's head over to the spot table view cell. We wanna first import core location. Then we wanna set up this property to hold the current location. We'll say var current location colon, and that's gonna be a CL location type exclamation point. This is an implicitly unwrapped optional. Then let's also declare a spot property. We'll say var lowercase spot colon uppercase spot exclamation point, also implicitly unwrapped. But this value is going to have a property observer. So add an open and close curly. And inside here, we'll add a did set. That's one word, lower camel case, capital S. That means anytime we set or we update this spot value, we're gonna execute the code inside of the curly. So make sure that you got open and close curlies after the did set. What are we gonna do when we update the spot value? Well, we're gonna go into name label.txt and we're gonna set that equal to spot.name. We're also gonna update the rating label, rating label.txt equals, and then in between double quotes, we'll say AVG period rating colon space string interp spot.average rating, then the rest of this code in this class is going to calculate the distance between the spot and the device location. So first we've got to make sure that we've got a current location, that's the device location, so we'll say guard let current location equals current location. Remember the current location we have up here is an implicitly unwrapped optional, but it could be nil. Else, open and close curlies. If we're in between these curlies, we haven't passed the guard test. So we'll say distance label dot text equals, and then in double quotes, we'll just say distance colon dash dot dash, and we'll return. Now, if the bouncer that is the guard statement lets us through, that means we may proceed to calculate the distance between the device location and the spot's location. So we'll say let distance in meters equals spot dot location. Remember, that's that calculated property dot distance from. You want to select this value here. Notice what code completion says. It says it returns the distance measured in meters from the current object's location to the specified location. With this item selected, press return on this bad boy. Now spot dot location is a CL location. We need to pass in a CL location to this from parameter. That's what current location is as well. See that in code completion? Current location is of type CL location. Magnificent. This is going to give us the value in meters. If you're from most parts of the world, you're cool with that. Or if you want it kilometers, you'll divide by a thousand. But those of us in the United States have to do more math. Americans want to see miles. So we'll say let distance in miles equals, and that'll be distance in meters multiplied by 0 0.00062137. We'll make sure that mini calculation is wrapped in parentheses just for readability. We'll multiply that by 10. That'll shift this value over one space to the left of the decimal point. Then we'll wrap all of this in another set of parentheses, and that value is gonna be a double value, and we'll call the dot rounded method on the result of this calculation. Look what code completion says about dot rounded. It says this returns the value rounded to an integral value using school book rounding. Integral value just means it doesn't have any decimal places, but it continues to be a double. It's not gonna change that. School book rounding is just the rounding you learned in grade school, 0.5 round up, less than 0.5 round down. So with dot rounded selected, press return to accept this. Now this is cool. We don't have anything after the decimal point. We multiplied it by 10 though, and we shifted everything over to the left by one place. Now we need to shift everything over to the right by one place. That'll leave us with just a single decimal point value. That's what we want. We do that by dividing by 10. Now that we got this value, we can set our distance label dot text property equal to, and in double quotes, we'll say distance colon string interp, and that'll be distance in my miles, and then after the string interp, space miles. Now let's head back over to spot list view controller. We'll find the table view cell for row at function. I'm going to use the jump bar to get there speedy quick. Now that I'm in cell for row at, I'm going to highlight this line here where I set the cell dot name label question mark dot text and just backspace to delete this. Instead, first we need to pass over our current location to our cell. So we'll say if let current location equals current location, open and close curlies. Then we'll say cell dot current location equals current location. And with that passed over, we're ready to take advantage of our property observer. So we'll say cell dot spot equals spots dot spot array. And in between the square brackets, index path dot row. Now, as soon as we change cell dot spot, that triggers the did set portion of the property observer associated with the spot property. All that code updates, the name label updates, the rating label updates. 
the distance is calculated, and the distance label updates. So now let's finish this off. We've got to be back in our spot list view controller. Scroll and find that function sort based on segment pressed. That's the one with the switch case statement in it. Then let's copy the code that's in case zero. We'll highlight the print statement in case one. We don't need that anymore. And we'll paste over what was in case zero into case one. And now let's modify it. Instead of saying dollar sign zero dot name, we're going to say dollar sign zero dot location dot distance from this method will perform a calculation but it's totally okay in sorting to compare the results of a calculation to the results of another calculation press return to accept this the cl location parameter is going to be current location then highlight everything that you just typed after dollar sign zero copy it with a command c and paste over everything after dollar sign one take a gander at this Make sure you got everything the way it's displayed here. Then we can go ahead and build and run. Let's see how this looks. Here's that magnificent app and ho ho, will you look at this. Even though we're sorted in alphabetical order, we've got our distance calculated properly. Want to go to the Blue Elephant in Bangkok? That's over 8,500 miles away. If you're at Boston College and you want to snack and not walk too far, head to El Pallone, only 0.3 miles away. Let's click on the distance segment and sort this. Whoa, there we go. El Pallone is the closest. Blue Elephant is the farthest, Kyle Bruich is the second farthest, Pino's Pizza only about a mile away. This is looking spectacular, and it's making me hungry. You can click around here to make sure everything is looking good. Why don't we go ahead and add a spot? I'm gonna click on the plus button. I'm gonna look up a place. I'm gonna search for Crazy Dose Pizza. That's close to my device location at Boston College. If you slide the map around, I can see the little pulsing circle indicator indicating that Crazy Dose Pizza is pretty close by. I'm gonna click on save and look at that. Our segmented control has distance selected, so we soar on distance. Our new record Crazy Dose Pizza is the closest 0.3 miles from my device location. So it shows up at the top of the table view. Your skills are skyrocketing. Hopefully you're feeling good about what you're doing, Swifter. Keep at it. There's more to come.